going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Pete's Carport. Thanks for tuning in, liking and subscribing. We're going to start this video off. At the end you're going to see the final product of the 1963 Austin Healey custom wood dash that I've been working on. And the reason why I'm starting this video out at the end and showing you guys the final product is because I basically have been just trying out different techniques, things that I've uh, talked to other people about. I went to Lowe's and talked to a gentleman there. He walked me through what he did with his bar top. I thought the pictures he showed me looked awesome. So I tried his technique, and you're gonna see that later on in this video. Now, the reason why I'm starting off at this point is because I feel like you, I could have eliminated a lot of the processes, the, some of the cost involved too, just by going uh, to this step here. Now. I'm not saying that what I did was wrong because it came out really, really nice. And I'm very happy with the final product. As you can see here, it's got a nice high gloss. But I followed his advice and picked up a satin finish. And when I poured that on here, um, you'll see later on the video what I mean by poured it on here. It basically um, came out really nice. And then uh, when it dried overnight, which was this morning, it didn't have the gloss finish that I was hoping to match with the steering wheel. So, I had already picked this up, which is a polycrylic, and I know that's for water-based, and I was told you shouldn't use this on the um, oil-based stains, but on the back here, I read that you can use it on oil-based stains, which I thought was very unique, and it's very fast drying. It's a 30-minute dry process. So I thought, what the heck, I had a sample piece of wood that I had put the um, other coating on, which you'll see uh, the coating that I'm talking about, and then I tried to spray this on this morning, and it came out really nice. So what I did was I sanded this with 220 grit sandpaper and applied one coat. Now, if you're planning on using this, it comes out very milky at first, and I'm not showing that, that uh, well, I'm not gonna show you guys that in this video because I did not record it because I didn't know if I was gonna do this process, but I wanted to show you the final product and kind of walk you through what I would do if I were to redo this. I would go and pick up this polycrylic after staining this, sand it down really nicely with, nicely with some 220 grit sandpaper, apply a coat, let it sit for an hour like it says on the cam, sand it back down with 220 grit, apply another coat, and do that until you get this nice thick looking coat like I have because the process that you're going to see that I'm going to do in this video is just very time consuming. Um, you need a lot of space, you waste a ton of product. And um, I don't think it's as efficient as just using one of these cans that's not that expensive. And I like the, the final coat that went on here. So let's go ahead. We're going to jump to the video. You guys can see all the things that I did. I wanted you to see the final product so you can kind of see how it came out. And uh, we're going to basically start the video now. All right, guys. So we got our piece nice and sanded down. We got a nice, smooth, uh, clean, beveled edge on there. And uh, we went ahead and 1500 grit sanded the whole thing down. Uh, wipe down all of the dust and now we're going to be applying our pre-stain you want to make sure you grab yourself some rubber gloves you can use any type of cloth uh, the nice thing about stain and this pre-stain is it's it's you don't have to have perfect uh, atmosphere you want to be outdoors so you're not breathing in the stuff but you don't have to worry about like as much the dust and so forth you want to keep it out of that um, that natural nature as much as possible it is a slightly windy day but I'm in an area that's uh, on the back porch, so I'm able to, to get a nice breeze, but not have to worry about too many things falling onto it. So according to the directions, you wanna make sure, first off, mix both of these up very well by shaking. Um, we're gonna basically just open it up by uh, getting the edge here. I already mixed this up pretty well. This is a pretty clear liquid anyways. You wanna get uh, a pair of gloves. You do not wanna put this on with just your bare hands. It'll get all over you. Now, the nice thing about this too is you can use any type of cloth. It doesn't have to be a specific cloth. I'm using an old t-shirt. And according to the directions, it says to apply nice and heavy, allow five to 15 minutes to dry, and then wipe off excess. And then within two hours, you wanna apply your actual stain. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on so you can see. It really just looks like I'm putting water onto the wood. And what this is doing, according to what I've read, is basically opening up the wood pores so that when we apply the actual stain, it goes on equally as compared to sometimes you get blotchy. So let me go ahead and get that all put on, let it dry, we're gonna wipe it down, and then we're gonna put our first coat of stain on and see how that looks. Okay guys, so it's been about 15 minutes with our pre-stain, and I've dried it, wiped it clean, and now I've basically went up and mixed our cherry wood stain from Minwax that we're gonna be using. And um, basically same type of directions, 
The heavier you put it on, the more it penetrates. Of course, it recommends using the pre-stain treatment. Um, also, uh, you leave it on for five to 15 minutes and wipe dry, apply another coat if you want it to go on a little darker. So we're gonna kind of play around with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a little test area and see how it comes out. And I'll show you guys. It's a, it's a pretty light color, so I'm probably going to um, apply a nice heavy coat on this whole thing, let it penetrate really well, and then I'll come back and maybe apply one more coat in about 15 minutes. So let me go ahead and get this whole thing covered down. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how it looks after the first coat and then see if we want to apply another coat. Let me just fill you guys in on how the panel is coming along. I've got two nice coats on there and I brought the steering wheel over and I think it's going to match up very, very nicely. It kind of matches the uh, the actual accents of the steering wheel. But with that clear coat poured on there, it might be even closer to the main part of the steering wheel. So very happy with that. I've got to wait till tomorrow before I can pour the lacquer on there. In the meantime, I'm probably going to start cutting out the gauges. I was going to leave that till after pouring the lacquer, but I think um, I don't want to uh, risk scratching or damaging the clear coat while trying to get the holes cut. So I'm going to cut all the holes I can except for the button holes, which I can do uh, even like a week later after I get everything put back. Alrighty guys, so it's a new day. The stain has dried. Um, we've got our uh, polyurethane. It's a fast drying polyurethane from Minwax. And the goal here is to just pour it on really thick. And then we're going to take a very fine bristle brush which I purchased from Lowe's. I'll leave a link to that too. And basically we're going to just do one quick run. Now this is all advice from somebody that I met at Lowe's that did a bar top. Um, I did not cut out the gauge holes because after thinking about it, it would be a lot more difficult trying to pour it over uh, a surface that has a lot of holes in it. So I'm gonna keep it as smooth as possible. Only the steering wheel hole is cut out currently. And uh, this is all test process, so hopefully this works the way it is. I'm going to grab my other glove, and we're going to get to doing this. Um, please let me know if you guys know of any better methods or if you have any suggestions. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. This is a first attempt at ever doing this. So I'm going to try to pour slowly, heavy, and then I'm going to quickly go and brush it off. And I'll kind of fill you guys in on dry time because this is obviously not the way the instructions suggest. So we're going to go ahead and just start down here, pour it on. Now I'm going to be honest, the, uh, the brush doesn't seem to really be doing much but scraping off some of the stuff. Now uh, what I was told was the brush is going to allow you to remove the bubbles. There were only three or four bubbles in the entire thing after I poured that on there. And uh, from what I've been told, you can let this dry and pour another coat over that. Um, that was also suggested that you uh, sand it down um, with a very fine sandpaper and then go back over it. But it's looking really, really good. I like the way it's looking. I'm going to grab the camera now and show you guys up close. Uh, let me remove my gloves. This is all being done uh, without any editing. So hopefully uh, I've got good angles for you guys. You guys can see how this is coming out. And you can see it's a very nice gloss. And there's really no bubbles right now on the surface, which is awesome. So I'm going to like let that dry. I'm going to fill you guys in on dry time on that. And you can see here, I just propped it up 
and put a tarp up underneath because you are definitely going to lose some of the uh, product. I'm going to go ahead and put a cover on that. And um, I planned on trying to get this on the vehicle for you guys in this video. But I want to cut this into several series after thinking about uh, how long this video would be. And a lot of the questions you guys might have if you're attempting to do this at home. I did not want to wrap it all into one video and make it a confusing video with a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I'm going to wrap it up here. This is going to be part two of it. And then I'm going to put part three up, which will be cutting out the gauges and installing it. And if we decide to pour one more coat on here. All right, guys. So my name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. Thanks again for tuning in. Look forward to uh, filling you guys in on the last video, and which is going to be uh, either just installing this or pouring another coat on here and installing it. But you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing. And uh, tell your friends about the channel and let me know anything you guys want to see, any suggestions. Have a wonderful day.